So welcome to this session on the NTSC examinations. Now NTSC, the full form stands for the National Talent Search Examination. Many people think that it is National Talent Science Examination. It's not Science Examination. It's actually National Talent Search Examination and it's an, a prestigious examination conducted by the NCRT. So in today's session, we are going to learn about how NTSC, the PAT is prepared, how we are going to apply for this, what is the pattern, you know, what are the procedures exactly that is required to prepare for this, what is the question paper pattern and so on, as per the questions that you have already asked me. So without wasting much time, I'm going to present to you this small session on the NTC examinations. So what is the examination pattern? See, the common mistake which people do is that they think that NTSC exam is like a normal CPSC examination. It is not like that. It is divided into two stages. The first part is called the SAT, that is the Scholastic Aptitude Test. And the second part is called MAT, that is your Mental Ability Test. I'll be explaining to you what are what is the difference between the two and what are the marking and how do we prepare for it. So there'll be 100 questions each. Okay, remember this questions are going to be of MCQ pattern, 100 questions each. So you have 100 questions of SAT and you have 100 questions of MAT. Now in the scholastic aptitude test, it's based on your subjects. You have science, maths and social science. The common mistake which students think is that the NTSC is a maths examination or there are some people who believe it's a science examination. It is not. Actually, if you see, there are only 20 questions of maths. So if you think that NTSC is a maths examination, I have seen many, many students just doing maths and that you see is only 20% of the 100. So you have actually 40 questions in science, that is your physics, chemistry and bio, and you have 40 questions of social science and maths is only 20. So the most common misconception which people make is that NTSC is an examination based on maths or examination based on science. And I see them practicing only mathematics. Whereas if you see the percentage, it's only 20 out of 100. And they totally neglect subject like social science. Somehow the NTSC examination has always been associated with maths, right? So I hope this is clear that it is going to be divided into two parts, MAT and SAT, mental ability test and scholastic aptitude test. Scholastic aptitude testing will be of science, maths, and SST of 40, 20, and 40 marks each. Okay, now we go to the mental ability test. So here, this section will have questions on analytical and logical reasoning. Okay, questions are normally not repeated. So some people go and, you know, go and practice 10-year papers. That will only give you an idea, but ultimately, they are going to be original questions where you will be tested on your analytical ability and your ability to think out of the box. So this section is going to test the students on their ability to solve reasoning questions, ability to think, evaluate and visualize. Very, very important to visualize, right? So some things may not be direct. It could be a lot of indirect questions, which we refer to as the higher order thinking skills, the HOTS questions. So this section is of 100 questions. This section will have 100 questions and the main topics from this section will consist of series, pattern, perceptions, analogic, coding, decoding, classification, hidden figures, problem solving, etc. So if you look into any mental ability test, you can Google search mental, you will have a lot of patterns. Okay, three patterns are given, what is the next? Or some missing alphabets or some missing numbers or some boxes has to be filled. So a lot of questions on patterns and uh, it's similar to you know all the general examinations that are asked for uh, let's say for banking or uh, for uh, other competitive exams these kind of uh, patterns so you can only help yourself by practicing more and more of these type of questions but it is definitely not going to be the same questions otherwise the purpose of this ntsc is going to be totally defeated right so part two we are going for scholastic aptitude test Okay, part two is the scholastic aptitude. This is based on what you study in your school, right? So this has got 100 questions divided into science, SST and maths. And you need to be well versed in the syllabus taught in class nine and 10. 
You have to be absolutely thorough with your ninth and tenth syllabus. Not that you are in tenth, so you forgot on all your class nine identities, class nine formulas, theorems. All those need to be revised. And it, the syllabus is actually saying up to class ten. So it is quite possible that uh, the concept that you learned in your lower classes about HCF, LCM, and uh, the divisibility rules, all that need to be revised because you can't say that the syllabus is only from tenth. There are a lot of questions based on ninth algebraic identities, polynomials, triangles, lines and angles. So many important topics you have done in class nine. All that can be done. So the time allotted for this is one twenty minutes. That is two hours. So we have two hours for the SAT and two hours for the MAT. So it is a four hour examination, not like our examination which is three hours. It's a four hour examination, one twenty minutes each. And the level of the questions will be equivalent to class tenth or equivalent exam. So the level of the question that means the syllabus is pertaining to class ten, but definitely the questions are not going to be very very direct. Otherwise, the uh, you know the scoring is going to be very very high, and they don't want that. They want only the real bright students to get this scholarship. The students who actually deserve this to get the scholarship. So the exam pattern is same for stage one and stage two. So, what is the meaning of the stage one and stage two? Stage one is your state level exams. So, you will have uh, you are from Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala. Every state is going to hold these examinations, and that is called your stage one. The stage one is you know the forms are out. Many forms, uh, many states have already brought out the form and filled. Some are, some states are still waiting for the links to be uploaded. And stage two will be the national level. So, you will have Uh, selected candidates from each stage, those who are qualifying that 40% and above. If you are in the general candidate category, and I think it's 32% if you are in the reserved category. So all those students who are are getting above 40% will go to the national level, which is going to be held approximately after six months. And they're all objective type of questions at both state level as well as the national level. So this is the what I told you the paper pattern. You will have hundred marks of math and hundred marks of stat. Hundred questions here, hundred questions here. Two hundred questions to be solved in four hours. So you need to solve hundred questions in one twenty minutes. So that's not going to be easy. You're not going to get a lot of time to think. So hundred questions and hundred and twenty minutes means you need to be really fast. Your concepts need to be very strong. You cannot spend five minutes solving one question. So, you need to be fast because two hundred questions is quite a lot, and hundred questions or fifty questions in an hour, that is what you have to do. So, let's say approximately you need to solve a question in about a minute so that you are on the safe side. So that is the speed that is required to complete this paper. Okay. So one very very important thing about the stage one and stage two marks are awarded for every correct answer, and there is no negative marking. so even if you don't know some questions you are absolutely safe if you want to take some options okay there is no negative marking so that's one good thing about the exam so if you think that uh, you are knowing something go for it if you are not knowing then also even if you do it there is no negative marking so you are going to you know get some marks by your guesswork or prob- the probability of getting let's say you have attempted for, uh, 40 questions and uh, you know 10 may be correct because of uh, the options that you have made so don't leave out questions that is my suggestion in the end when the examination is over when your four hours is going to about to get over whichever questions you have left out just put something so that there is a possibility of getting marks in those so you get one mark for the correct answers for every wrong answer one third of the marks will be deducted for the stage 2 so remember there is a difference in stage 1 and stage 2 in stage 1 when you are applying there's no negative marking but stage 2 it's going to be a little more competitive because at the national level you are competing with the kids from all over india and they want to really eliminate people who are come to that stage with you know guesswork so they don't want any guesswork so now what is going to happen for every wrong answer one third of the marks will be deducted so you are going to do and no questions Uh, there is no negative marking for questions left unattempted so if you are not interested in uh, if you are not sure it is better to leave out the questions in 
the national level for the stage two. That is, if you clear the stage one. So hope this is clear. There is no negative marking in stage one, and in stage two, there is negative marking, and therefore you need to be careful. Okay. So what are the qualifying marks for the general category? You need to get at least forty percent marks in each paper. And 32 marks if you are belonging to a special category, then only then only you will go to the next stage, that is the national level. Okay, so here there is a, 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 a the licensing officer. In case your uh, you are having problems in getting the forms, you need to contact your licensing officer. And when you get the licensing officer's number and email, that person is going to give you the application form, the link to be formed. So I will. Further share with you after this uh, the document that has been released. Yeah, just one second. So, if you are going to the just give me a moment. I'll just share that. Yeah, so the licensing officers' numbers and this can be obtained by Google search if you are going to the website. Yeah, so you can get the list of the licensing officer. You can type here. NTSE 2021, okay, go for the 2021. So here you have the details of the application forms that has been out. How can I apply for NTSE 2021? The details are given here, okay. And if I want the list of the licensing officers, of each state, okay, that is going to be different. So there will be a site, you will be directed to a site of NCRT. That is the most reliable site for NTSC information, right? So this is the website you will have to always follow for everything. So here we have the information brochure of the NTSC. All the details are given here. And here we have the region-wise licensing officer list, okay? So if you're from Arunachal Pradesh, this is the name and designation of the person you have to contact. This is the address, the phone number and the mail address is given. So the person can uh, go to the website, email or contact that person uh, to if you haven't got the link. So all state-wise, these licensing officers are the officers who are responsible for the links to be forwarded to different schools, different candidates and rest overall responsible to conduct these examinations in the state. So that's what the NTN. How do we prepare for it now? See, as I told you, there are many, many people who are preparing only for maths. Remember, this is not a maths examination. This is an examination of all the subjects, as I have told you. So kindly do not restrict yourselves to that. So let me just try to get Yeah, one minute. Yes. So this is the notification that has come out recently from the CBC I'm sharing with you. Yes, so National Talent Search Examination for students studying in class 10 is meant to identify and nurture talent. There is a scholarship of 1,250 per month for class 11 and 12 students and 2,000 for undergraduate and postgraduate students. So you are going to get this money if you per month till you complete your studies, if you're going to uh, clear this. Of course, there are some reserved categories and all that. If you belong to that, you can do that. So tentative dates, the last date for submission of application forms 
it will be notified by the respective state governments. The examination of the stage one has been declared in many states on that is to be held in 12th December in Mizoram, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Andaman and Nicobar Islands and all other states and union territories are going to be on 13th December 2020 on Sunday, right? So except for these states which are on 12th, all the others are going to have on 13th December. And slate, the national level exam, or that is the stage two, will be held on 13th June. And all class 10 students, whichever uh, uh, state you are from, you are all eligible to give these examinations. And there is going to be no domicile restriction for anybody. Okay, so this is the pattern as I explained, 100, 100 questions, 100 marks each, duration of 120 minutes each. Okay, so here, there is a new thing that has come in as per this. There will be no negative marking in stage two examination earlier. As I mentioned in the PPT, the previous one, that's PPT was prepared that time. Uh, it was given that there will be negative marking in the stage two examination for this year. There is also no negative marking. So this is something new which has been released. Uh, this notification has come just uh, yesterday, so this according to this. Now, there could be changes again, so you need to be very careful because as per this, it is not finalized. So, there could be changes for level two. Level one is okay. And level two, there could be changes. So, we really have to wait for the next notification because being a COVID year, they have relaxed the criteria a little bit. Otherwise, there used to be negative marking. You may contact the state or the union treaty license officer for procuring the application form. I've already told you from where you will get that list. And the completed form should be signed by the principal and reach before the last day of submission. And different states are having different dates of submission. So you need to contact your licensing officer, the address and all the phone numbers, email can all be obtained at the site www.ncrt.nic.in, right? So, no application form should be sent to NCRT, very, very, very uh, clearly written. It should be directed to the state licensing officer. So the most important person for you at this moment for the NTSC exam is your licensing officer of your state. You're not going to contact CBSC, NCRT, different, different departments. Okay, the fee is going to be notified for the stage one examinations and the mode of payment. Every detail is going to come and stage two examination, there's going to be no fees is going to be absolutely free of cost, okay? So the states are going to notify the fee. So whichever state you are, you will have to get the notification from your respective state governments. And the Indian students who are studying abroad, they are also eligible to apply, to directly apply for the stage two NTS examinations as prescribed by the NTS brochure. And you will have to send the photocopy of the mark sheet, everything by 28th Feb. So not only uh, students who are studying in India, but students, Indian students who are studying in so many CPSC schools in Nigeria, Kenya, Namibia, uh, Dubai, Doha, Qatar, all these places, they are also eligible to give this examination. And the application form for these students will be uploaded on the NCRT website in the month of January, 2021. So those students who are uh, from abroad, who are stud Indian students who are abroad need to apply only by January 2021, and it will be announced separately. So this is the not latest notification that we have got. So I hope things are now clear. And as I told you, the most important thing is to get the links and submit everything to the licensing officer. You need to uh, contact the licensing officer and not anybody else, because then your forms and the information that you get may not be accurate. So thank you so much and hope things are clear and uh, you are going to prepare for this examination, not only for maths, not for science, but all the other subjects. And the previous year's sample papers are just going to give you an uh, idea, are going to help you to solve the questions. You can broaden your horizons. You can increase your creativity, but questions will definitely not be repeated. But you need to train yourself in questions like that. So with that, I end this session. Thank you so much.